What is good, YouTube? We are back with another Q&A. Look like we liked the first Q&A, a little raw upload. So we're gonna do another one, but we're gonna try to make this one a little bit shorter. So it's like, you know, you're not sitting there for 20, 25 minutes trying to get to know Matias. But yeah, I mean, as you see um, around me, a little new space. Um, so content that will be uploaded will be kind of bashed a little bit. So it's gonna have like old stuff and like new place and old place, whatever, you, you get the vibe. But this is new home. Yes, this is junky. It is what it is. I'm bringing you content. So let's start off with some more Q&A. We're gonna try to make this one a little more like seamless. Um, let's go with body goals, competition, and bodybuilding. Um, body goals for me, I fight with this battle with food as being seasoned way too well. Um, lately, I've had a lot of mental and emotional imbalances, which have caused me to overeat or eat as a form of like settling. Um, and I wouldn't even say comfort. It just gives me some type of, I don't know, this normal sense of living uh, where I'm not eating anything like super strict. Um... So for me, now that I'm kind of out of a lot of that, I can see myself doing a bodybuilding competition. Would I like to do men's physique? Sure. I do have some health concerns with my kidneys, uh, my creatine levels, uh, my uric acid levels, and some other things that may prohibit that. Basically like that huge shrink down of weight. Like today, just now I was 280 pounds. Um, that is post travel, lots of junk food. I'm sure I kind of like you know flatten back out, but I would like to do a bodybuilding show for the challenge. I think the big part for me is wanting to essentially look good in my clothes. Not saying that I don't look good in my clothes at current space, but I really feel like I can put on. A larger variety of clothes if I was a little bit smaller I wasn't like as bulky wasn't as like thick in the shoulder you get you get the drift so I think that that's the goal like I said if I can get down to like 240 I can reassess to see how I'm looking go from there if I'm not feeling it go down to 230 to 20 I think ultimately it sounds like it's crazy but I think 200 might be my sweet spot 200 to 220 might be my sweet spot. So we're going to shoot for it. And we just kind of see like what happens from there. Um, let's see. Should I wait to start content until I'm good at a good point? Um, this is about starting content. No, just start the content. An example was me. I used to just have to be at the perfect point, perfect time of the day to record, do this, do that, upload. Just start. You don't have to have a camera. You don't have to have a microphone. You don't have to have all this fancy stuff. Do not let someone else's journey basically dictate your journey. And when I say that, it's just, you don't have to have all that. Like these cameras that we have on the iPhone are crazy enough to basically record whatever you want to. Keith Lee's, Keith Lee, sorry, is a really good example of that. How he uses iPhone to record sat in his daughter's chair and record food. It's just about getting the content out there. It's just about basically people seeing you um, and being exposed to you and grasping your personality and like your charisma and just running with it. Just find what your calling is and just go towards that. But don't wait for the perfect moment because never, it's never going to be a perfect moment. Do you like being big, stocky, bulk, swole? No. Um, it just really depends. Some days it's kind of cool, like, you know, you go to a club, somebody bump into, bump into you, like, oh, my, my bad, big dog. Or it's like, you know, like, there's a little more, like, presence when you're a little bit, like, bigger. Um, but I just don't, I just don't feel good. <laughs> like, it's hard being 280, and, like, it's hard, like, getting up, walking, like, putting on clothes, like, tying my shoe, doing this, doing that, like, little simple stuff where I'm out of breath. Like, it's just not, it's not, it's not cute at all. So, it's a catch 22. Like, yeah, I like being swole, big, like, move some furniture if I need to, like, you know, whatever you want to call it. When I said move furniture, I'm talking about fighting. But, um, like, it, it's nice until 
it's not nice. So I'm, I think I'm kind of out that phase, just being big and diesel. I just really want to lock in and just be small, be nimble. If I got to break off a 100-yard dash, hop three fences, parkour, do this and do that, I want to be able to do that. Right now, wouldn't make it. I'm done for it. It would not happen. Um, how do you deal with temptation? That's a good one. I think temptation is exactly what it is. It's just being stronger than what you are being tempted by. Whether that's male, female, food, um, shoes, drugs, whatever you want to call it. It just really depends. I know personally that I don't really call shoes like a temptation. For me, a temptation would be like, um, well, yeah, I would say like women would be like a temptation. It's like just an easy temptation for anyone, men and women. You scroll on social media, you see a lot, like it makes you fall into temptation. But I think it's just being stronger than what that temptation is showing. And if you know that you have a goal in mind, then that temptation doesn't even really like resonate in your mind at all. Um, I think people end up falling into temptation because they are not actually locked in. They're actually focused on what they say that they're focused on. So if you're telling me that like you're you're locked in, you're focused, you're this and that, but you're over here creeping with like him or her or doing this, doing that, that's taking you off task, off your goal that you created for yourself, that's how you kind of fall into temptation. But when you're really locked in and you're really focused and you're at peace and your mental peace, emotional peace, or you at least you're you're working on that. You're not, like, you're not even focused. Like, you're not even worried about a woman or a guy passing away. It don't matter if it's Chris Brown, Tiana Taylor, like, whomever. Like, it's not going to matter because, like, you're so locked in. So, I think avoiding temptation is basically having a plan and deriving from that plan. You have other plants of success that you want to attain. Whatever that looks like. So, to stay locked in, stay focused. Stay grounded and have tunnel vision. If you have tunnel vision, you can't be tempted because, like, you're right here. The temptation's out here. So if you stay right here, you're good. You don't have to worry about none of that. Um, my next, what are your next steps for content creating? Um, for me, it's just gonna continue um, getting better at doing things. Right now, I've outsourced a lot of my YouTube content to some editors. I do have one particular editor that I use. Um, shout out to Alexis. Um, she does all my editing for me. Just because I don't have a computer and everything right now. Now, in the future, once I do buy a computer, I will be doing more editing myself so I can actually be involved in like my development, involved in like the actual growth and planning of the Mr. GQ. I will still use editors from time to time, um, but it won't be as frequent. I think for me, it's just expanding. Um, now that I'm kind of out this weird space where I know I'm not, I'm not moving, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, it gives me a little more time back now to like really like lock in. Like we're getting ready to fall into the new year for January. So now like from now up until January 1st, it's all about already being in that mind space that I need to be in when the new year hits. Like I'm not waiting until January 1st to be like, oh, well, new year, new me. I'm not doing that. Go ahead and lock in now, get focused, um, grow the brand, grow the name, grow the community. Um, I, didn't, I need to do more PR stuff, which is basically selling myself, putting myself out there more, um, being a lot more consistent with the content that I'm uploading via YouTube, via Instagram, TikTok, and just basically reaching out to more brands, being on a more timely basis with brands, um, being more open to work with more brands because I am very closed off. And I feel like because I am so closed off, that is potentially closing doors, essentially. So um, it's really just kind of like, how can I perfect their Mr. GQ? Like, how can I make this something that's so small, how can I expand it more and more? And like with the business, if you have a business, it's all about getting better like day in, day out. So what am I gonna do every day, every week, every month, that's gonna be a constant benefit to the Mr. G, the Mr. GQ brand and essentially growing the brand? Like how are we gonna do that? So I think for me, it's just staying on the grind. Like I said, being consistent, um, having a routine. Routine is everything. And I think when I do that, like I said, compound interest, 
it's just gonna actually like work in my favor for the most part. I'm gonna blow up like Nitro, that's what I wanna do. I wanna blow up like Nitro, don't wanna go to work no more. I want to wake up, bet on me, essentially, take care of myself, um, and bring good content to y'all. Like, y'all enjoy the content. And I just feel like with me having like an actual job, it hinders the amount of like creativity and productivity that I could bring to the social media world. But I still have to have a job to basically fund that um, until I get to that point where I don't have to have it no more. Um, then I can just do it kind of full time. Let's see. Do you care about your followers numbers? I think they're saying, do you care about your number of followers? I think that's what he was saying. Um, no. Um, I believe if you only watch a number, I'm going to question kind of like what you're doing it for, if that makes sense. Now, I still do watch my numbers to see if I'm growing, if I'm see if I'm reaching, but I'm not getting on my page and like, dang, like I only have 15 followers or dang, like I'm, I'm not worried about that. Like you have to have the consistency. The consistency is going to bring the numbers. Um, I don't, I don't care about how many followers I have. I'm grateful for who I have. If I lose 500, I just lose 500. But I just know that in the back of my head that there's going to be 500 or maybe a times three where it's going to be 1500 more people that's going to subscribe or follow my journey, even if I lose 500. So Never worry about the numbers. The numbers are going to be numbers. Um, now, if you start taking like a sharp decline, like down, down, down all the time, then maybe it's just kind of like stepping back, reevaluating your content. It's kind of like what you're doing, seeing where you may be messing up at or see where you have opportunity at. Um, but I don't, I'm not one of the, the content creators that because I have a number, because I have like 46K on TikTok or I have 10K on Instagram, I'm just like, ooh, I'm better than you. Like, doesn't matter. I'm a person just like anyone else. So um, I don't let the followers blow my head up. Like I don't go anywhere and be like, oh yeah, I got 100K followers. Like I'm better than you. Like, no, you're not a good person. Um, if you if you equate your numbers to like reality, like social media and reality are two different things. And on social media, we highlight like the great, like the grand scheme, like the greatest of the greatest, but we don't show the low lights. Um, I try to do a good job of being organic and just being fluent. It's like, hey, like this is what like you're gonna get crust in my face, or if I'm going through depression, like I'm gonna let you know that um, I'm not gonna sell you something that's not attainable. I'm not gonna sell you anything that's not real, that's not organic. That's just not who I am. Um, Let's see. How do you get into content creating and influencing? Um, I think it goes back to the other one. It's just starting. Um, someone may like you for something, whether it be like how you talk or you know, how you style yourself or how you dress or how you do this and that. And from there, this is going to be a cult of people that will follow you from there. So it's just about basically going through, like I said, figuring out what you like, figuring out what you want to do. And it's kind of massaging that into something bigger than what it actually is. Let's see. Would you say you're more of an extrovert or an introvert? I am an introvert. Um, because of my job, for one, it creates me a lot. I have to be a little more, I have to be a little bit more social because of like my role in my company. Um, for two, also because of social media, I... I don't have to, but it helps me on the PR side of things to go out to events and be social, say, hey, because if I just stay in my apartment all times, I don't actually meet any of you that actually want to meet me or talk or socialize or have these like one-off questions um, about like mental growth or whatever the case is, like, I can't actually give you the full experience or the full exposure if I'm just cooped up. So. I do, I do have to pop out a little bit, but I know at the end of the day that I'm very introverted. I think one of my greatest things, uh, my love language is quality time, but I also enjoy isolation, um, which it doesn't match. It doesn't match at all. Um, but I'm very much an introvert. But because of social media, um, it does put me in predicaments where I do need to be a little social. At the same time, I'm still not that type of person that is like super extroverted where I'm gonna go out my way and like 
like hawk down somebody to like to talk to them or speak to them or if i go to an event i'm still a little more reserved like i won't just walk up to a random table of strangers and be like hey my name is matias blah blah like i won't do that that's just not me um i that's just not me 15 minutes let's do one more question um how do you style yourself get dressed um that's been a large question a lot of people always ask um i think for me it's just wearing what i like and really not caring about whatever like whoever like whoever whatever whomever thinks of what i have on a lot of people put on clothes based upon what they think others like like what they should wear like oh like because of your bill you should be wearing this or you should be wearing that like no wear what you want wear what you feel comfortable in um wear within your budget like don't go out here buying denim tiers and gallery department and this and that and you can't afford it like you can't keep up with it like that makes no sense just stay within your budget like i have jeans from target i have jeans from urban outfitters I have jeans from asos um I have jeans from like kind of like all over clothes from all over. I used to be very one track mind, Polo, Ralph, Nike. Like you couldn't like you couldn't tell me anything else. Then I started branching out into Carhartt, just <laughs> really good material shirts, favorite. And I've kind of I'm trying to minimalize my like clothing. Um, I'm really big in the fear of God. Really simple pieces that can kind of match up with multiple items. Like so, I might have like one pair of sweats that can go with five or six different things. Like it's kind of like the first find like your portfolio and your clothes, but I just wear what I want to wear. I don't really don't care. Like if I want to wear six different colors, that's what I want to wear. But you have to be confident in that, and you have to know what you put on is what you put on, and you put it on for you. Like you didn't do it for no one else. Like when I get tattoos, it's like you can't see. Like people get tattoos sometimes because they want them to be visible and they want others to see that they have tattoos versus you getting a tattoo for yourself. Like that tattoo is for you, for no one else. Even though it is on your skin and it's visible for everyone, but it's okay for it to be hidden because it's for you. So your clothing, your style, it's a version of you. It's just like your best version. And it's just like, it's a form of art. You like express yourself through your outfits and your clothes and like, you would not be authentic if you're like waiting on approval from someone else on what they think that you should wear versus what you know you should like what you should wear. So just put on put on what you want to put on and don't second guess it. Just just put it on. And I guarantee you, when you remove all that negative bias on the world, like the negative thoughts, like oh like what if like someone else or what if this what if that. Once you get rid of that, you're gonna start elevating like your clothes and then you're just gonna be. New York Fashion Week type stuff. Um, that's gonna be it. 18 minutes. That's enough. We went over. But like, comment, subscribe. We still have a lot more questions to ask. That goes by fast. Um, we have a lot more questions to ask. So we're gonna save this question. We're gonna run back another QA. We're just gonna keep doing this. You like the raw vlog uploads? Let's do them. So thank you for watching this one. We'll catch you on the next one.